ISO 2022 and instant payments are accelerating payments modernization and serving as a catalyst for growth and innovation. Banks are in the process of up-tiering their payments ecosystems to meet the ISO 2022 industry mandate and also beginning to consider how they can leverage the additional ISO 2022 data to drive new value-added services for their customers and additional revenue opportunities. Yeah, to explore this in more detail, we are joined right now by Courtney Trimble, Global Head of Payments at KPMG. Courtney, welcome. Thank you. Curious, what is the current state of play when we are talking about ISO 2022 and we're taking a look at the global landscape? So, first of all, ISO 2022 is a watershed moment for right. the payments industry, a global mandate across all financial institutions globally. So some jurisdictions have gone live, such as the UK and EU, uh, some still to go live, such as the US, which goes live next March 2025, and then the SWIFT coexistence period completes in in November 2025. So we have been very, very busy um, with um, helping um, institutions globally meet the uh, the global ISO 2022 mandate. So we started this journey about five years ago with the large transaction banks that have multiple jurisdictions in play and are still helping a lot of the smaller regional banks as as well. Um, so the focus has squarely been on the on the mandate and hitting that. Um, the next focus is really how do you benefit from this? How do you benefit from the incremental data? So that's that will be a next step and something that we're starting to look at as well. Broadly speaking, why is this ISO so important to the industry, would you say? It's, it's first of all, everyone is speaking now with ISO 2022, a global language. Mm -hmm. Right now you have proprietary formats in each country. ISO is a common global business language. So we'll all be speaking the same language that helps with uh, cross-border payments, that helps with interoperability. Previously, different jurisdictions um, have different uh, payment uh, messaging systems, and uh, this is really causing low SDP, um, and, you know, uh, challenges from that perspective as well. So this will be um, certainly um, will help that cross uh, cross border interoperability and then also the incremental data as well. Incremental data, 30 to 40 percent additional contextual data moving with the payment. So very, very important in terms of what do you do with that as a next step. I mean, when there's seamless communication, when there's that interoperability effect, that's incredible. But of course, it comes with the challenges right. and the obstacles. What are those that banks have to overcome right now? The challenges right now and what we've been working on for the past five years is this change impacts the entire payments ecosystem. Yeah. Everything from the payments processing layer to your upstream and downstream interfacing systems to your integration layers. It's really that, that payments message moves throughout the payments ecosystem. So it's really getting a handle on that looking at what are the impacts across the entire uh, payments ecosystem, and then you know how big is the bread box, if you will, in terms of what I need to worry about, and then the enablement, which we're heavily working on now. You touch on the impacts. What is the knock-on effect then of ISO 2022 uh, influencing sort of the broader payments modernization, shall we say? It's, it's having a huge impact on payments modernization. Uh, the two things that are really driving payments modernization and the impacts on that are, first of all, the move to instant payments, the move to a 24-7, 365 high availability environment, and second, the move to ISO 2022. And the reason why payments modernization is so impacted, it's because that move to 24-7, 365 high availability and the incremental data, the new messaging type for ISO, legacy platforms just can't accommodate it. Yeah. So payments platforms, we recently did a study um, 79% with uh, uh, Fortune 500 executives, CEOs, um, and the findings came that 79% of all banks will be modernizing multiple payment types over the next several years, and specifically with respect to ISO 2022 and high-value payments, 63% of banks are currently modernizing or will be modernizing their high-value wires platform. So certainly this is serving as the catalyst for change in payments modernization. I mean, there's no doubt it unlocks a lot of opportunities. So if we take a look at what ISO 2022 mm -hmm. really provides, what are the key benefits in your view? 
Well, first of all, it's um, you're, t you're talking about a new XML modern language. So that opens up new innovation opportunities, new revenue streams. You're talking about everyone operating um, and talking the same language. So that cross-border interoperability and the facilitation of cross-border payments is key. And then obviously the incremental data. You're talking about 30 to 40 percent additional data what are you gonna do with that data? How are you gonna monetize it? Um, you have um, incremental um, structured data from a um, address standpoint, remittance information, beneficiary information, just lots of new data to take, marry up with other um, external payment types or um, um, information sources. And how do you look at this on an industry by industry basis to really be able to monetize that? Let's talk about this new data. What are you seeing in terms of the benefits of the incremental payments data that ISO 20022 provides? Yeah, it's it's really it's really those benefits, right? So um, looking at it on a industry by industry basis, um, I think one thing about ISO 20022, now we have access to a lot of new data. How do you take that data? How do you marry it up with external data sources? How do you look at it from an industry by industry basis to say, okay, across a specific industry, industry's value chain, what is the impact um, to um, the benefits of a specific industry and how we can leverage that data. Mm -hmm. So, so many, so many benefits to, to read from the data. There's no doubt the benefits are there, but when everybody is talking the common language, what do banks need to do to differentiate themselves, uh, you know, and go the extra mile with ISO? I think, and this goes back to um, some of the upfront work and the, the ISO 20022 strategy and enablement that we're doing, there are different ways to look at this. You can look at this squarely as a compliance exercise, or you can like look at this as a strategic business opportunity, right? Um, it's such a, an overarching change. So really looking at that as a new strategic transformation effort is what banks need to do, right? Um, looking at it, we, we, back to the survey of um, Fortune 500 CEOs. Um, in this survey, we found that 76% of CEOs the bank for banks that, uh, that, that we interviewed or we got survey results back from look at ISO 20022 not as a compliance exercise, mm -hmm. but a strategic business opportunity. Yeah. So that differentiation is going to be making the strategic infrastructure yeah. decisions to t be able to take advantage of that yeah. data right, and unlock the potential of ISO 20022, yeah. and then harnessing that data, and then not looking at it as peanut butter, but l really looking at it at a, on an industry-by-industry industry basis to say, how am I going to leverage this to create new revenue streams for the bank and new value-added opportunities for my corporate clients? It takes a lot of time, energy, and a lot of expertise of which uh, you've provided for us here. Courtney, thank you so much for your time thank and you. helping us really dissect all of the opportunities. That's Courtney Trimble, Global Head of Payments at KPMG. Thank you so much. Thank you.